keep Yow. away at it. How's that going, everybody? We're alive. <laughs> yeah, we're alive now. On the internet. We're the Nerd Ledger. I'm Cage. That's Chair. We are sure. here to uh, talk to you here. about nerd stuff. Yep. There's all kinds of nerd stuff going on in the world. Is there? Fortunately and unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's some. Yeah, just, Most of it I is anger, got, you know. My my Dude, after I sent that article I sent you today... Like my brain broke after I read that. Like it literally, my brain like snapped out. Uh, like, which you... which one? The Avengers one? Uh, yeah, but they're just gonna do a movie with all of them again. Like <laughs> that's not gonna fix anything. I think that's actually gonna make it worse. Um. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't know what the angle is there, and I don't know what what truth there is to that. But you know, we'll, we'll talk about it. We'll... Yeah, some... I suppose I, did, I didn't read the Variety article, but I don't know, man. For that just to bubble to the surface is the wildest thing for me to see. Yeah. Um, doo, doo, doo. Live, live, live. Um, yeah, so today we're going to talk about some nerd news. We're also going to talk about Loki, Season 2, Episode 4. Chair has some thoughts on that. Yeah, well, I think it more has to do with the entire season rather than... Um anything else the entire season yeah i just don't think it's gonna work at all and i don't know we'll talk we'll talk about when we get there let's go over the news though i'm sure i'm ready i'm ready to shit talk a bunch of rich and famous people i'm ready okay sure sure we'll do that (laughs) we'll do that um bing bong boop uh bink sorry just fixing stuff okay news Eh. Cool. All right. So uh, the first bit of news is some old, old news. Actually, it's new news, but it's about old movies. Um, So apparently Kevin Feige was frustrated about Marvel's lack of control over pre-MCU movies. So for people who don't know, Kevin Feige was an executive producer on the early X-Men movies in the early 2000s and uh, the Spider-Man movies and all that good stuff. Uh, And so, yeah, that's what this article is about, apparently. Uh, So, yeah, Kevin Feige wished that Marvel had more control over movies that came out before the start of the MCU. In the recently published MCU, The Reign of Marvel Studios book by Joanna Robinson, Gavin Edwards, and Dave Gonzalez via the Direct, Feige commented on how he and producer Avi Arad both tried to influence the production's of movies based on Marvel characters prior to 2008's Iron Man. He said, we suggested, but they didn't listen. We didn't have the control. I hated that. Prior to the start of the MCU, Marvel's characters um, were divided among a number of different studios. 20th Century Fox, for example, owned the rights to the X-Men and the Fantastic Four, while New Regency had the rights to Daredevil. New Line Cinema was handling the Blade franchise, etc. Sony was Spider-Man. Sony still has Spider-Man. Um, mm. but yeah, uh, Kevin Feige's mission, uh, to get the rights to, uh, sorry, to get the rights to Marvel's characters back, uh, Craig Kyle, uh, who worked on the MCU's Thor movies, said that Feige was fighting to regain control of, uh, of Marvel Studios characters as soon as he started working for the company. He said, from that moment, I touched down in Marvel, Kevin Feige had been telling Avi, we have to get the rights back. Avi was in a situation where he represented all of Marvel. He was the face of Marvel Studios. Kevin was in there to make great movies. That could never be a guarantee until we could actually control the process. While Sony Pictures still owns the rights to Spider-Man and Universal Pictures owns the uh, distribution rights to the Hulk, meaning Marvel can put the Jade Giant in other projects but can't give Bruce Banner a solo film without Universal's blessing, Marvel Studios was brought out Uh, was bought out by Walt Disney Studios in 2015, and since then acquired 21st Century Fox in 2019. Various X-Men characters are now gradually being introduced into the MCU, while a Fantastic Four movie directed by Matt Shackman is currently scheduled to release on May 2nd, 2025. Um, So I guess that's kind of like maybe where the idea for the MCU started, but this is something that's frustrated Marvel fans forever, is that um, not everything lives under one roof, and it's because, for people who don't know, way back when, in the 80s and whatnot, uh, Marvel was experiencing some financial troubles, and uh, they sold yeah. off the film rights to a bunch of their characters, 
And of course they had to sell them to their most popular characters because that's what sells. So that includes X-Men, Fantastic Four, and Spider-Man at the time. And um, they didn't sell off the rights to the characters nobody cared about, such as Iron Man. Um, <clears throat> so that's why uh, that's why the MCU exists the way it does today, why it started with the Avengers, because you can bet your ass if they had the rights to X-Men and Fantastic Four and Spider-Man back then, they would have kicked it off with something else. Um, everything seems to have worked out for the most part, but... Um, yeah, I think that's that's a good thing is that everything did work out, and you know, it's unfortunate again that we don't have any Fantastic Four or X Men. But to me, that's always been the greatest case for just like deleting whatever, like you know, having some end movie to the current MCU we have, where something happens and everyone goes off in the sunset or it explodes or goes off in some different temporal time traveling reality. I, I don't know. And then we get X Men and Fantastic Four and some spin offs or whoever's involved in their peripheries, like you know, the other movies were. So, yeah, I, I think I think that's like the best healthiest direction to go at this point because we just getting too in the weeds, like, and I, I you know, it's just um, confusing and exhausting. I feel like, which you know, you say that's what they're going for already, basically with the uh, you know merging of the universes, right? That's what you already think they're basically trying to do. Yeah. So the the biggest problem I think that Marvel has is they've, you know, not everybody who watches and likes the MCU has been on the journey from the beginning. And what I mean by that is like during COVID, a lot of people started just, just binged all the movies, right? Like, you know, we've been, we've, at least I have, and I, I'm pretty sure you have too, but like, you know, we've been in it since the beginning, since the MCU started. Um, I remember seeing the Avengers in theaters and thinking it was like one of the coolest things ever. Like I was so yeah. happy to see it in theaters. And, and I was so happy it was good. When all those things were happening, right, we would get those post credit scenes and we would get little hints of what's to come next, right? Um, mm. And so we all had an idea, but we didn't all always know. And when you think about it, right, like when we started getting introduced more to, you know, the, the Infinity Stones, like mm. it became pretty clear. But back in 2008, when, when the first Iron Man came out, Nobody was going to see Thor knowing, oh, one day something bigger is going to come of all this. We're going to get this amazing thing. Like, it, it didn't become that clear until later on, right? And so you built up, you know, a series of films into Avengers movies. And that was a cool thing. But my point with the people who, who join later is they see where everything ended and therefore they think that now after endgame they should see where everything's going but people mm -hmm. don't see where it's going and that's what makes them lose interest and say well what's the point of all these movies what's the point of this what's the point of that i don't get it like they're just being confusing nobody knows what's going on like marvel lost their way marvel fell off marvel did this and it's like well just because you can't see where it's going doesn't mean that it's not going somewhere important and also yeah. you should stop thinking about what this all leads to and just watch things for what they are if you're interested and if you're not then don't watch them like yeah. people can watch doctor yeah. strange too and yeah. and say man that movie isn't building for anything in the mcu okay yeah yeah i don't know I, it's, for me it's just i want to see like x-men and, and i want to see these things you know these are things i just think they'll be good and awesome with a bigger budget and like you know i'm probably more a little bit more capable writers and just being able to hold it to a really high standard <clears throat> and hopefully you know we'll get really good content out of that but be awesome and amazing to review um you know because like the 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 Disney Plus stuff so far has been a really mixed bag, in my, in my personal opinion. I know for you, you really enjoyed Miss Marvel, so that's probably, like, that's one we, like, split on. Well, uh, like, I think, like, it's not just, like, a mixed bag thing, bro. This guy calls me every fucking Wednesday. I tell him I'm podcasting Wednesdays at 5.30. Don't pick up. He's then still don't pick up. In, then, I'm not going to pick, pick up. up. I'm not going to pick up. Okay. I'm not going to pick up. <laughs> okay. But okay, he good. fucking knows. And he's like, ah, sorry, but I have bad memory. <laughs> Dude, no worries. Just don't, just don't pick up. <laughs> That's all I got to say on that. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think it's our favorite, our favorite boy. I think there's validity to to this idea that Marvel, uh, is certainly not up to the standards it once was, and maybe that's because people aren't as 
what is what's the word like romanticized by it again or something you know like or maybe there was so there was there was an allure to ahead. marvel That's before good no sorry go go ahead i think we're i think there's a little bit of lag a little bit of dropped inputs oh no there cannot be that no lag yeah oh. it doesn't look that bad but it looks like you're stuttering a little bit oh wait what did it say what did it say on the thing it doesn't say anything but when i talk i do see the lag like i see the light turn green on discord like a couple seconds later yeah, well, there's going to be MS between the stream and stuff like that, but there is a little bit of lag between us. But I, I don't think it's that bad. I think it's only like half a second, so we can probably keep talking. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think so, people... Yeah, just finish your thought, and I'll finish my thought. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. I think some people have, like, <laughs> lost their... Uh, th like, they're out of the honeymoon period with Marvel, so they're, like, mm -hmm. you know... Like, it, it doesn't have that allure that it once had, and so people are just like, eh, it's not good anymore. Yeah, I think also, you know, this is the new thing, the streaming service, you know, and what they're, they're experimenting with what works and what doesn't work, you know, and I think we have what we, I think we know now what works is like with She-Hulk when all the episodes are these self-contained little things that lead up to like a season finale that has like, you know, that connects all the episodes, that one little drop of the plot line they've had, you know, leading up to that finale. Yeah, you know, stuff like that, and you know, the like Loki. Loki just feels like a movie that's been chopped up. Like it, it I just, I, I hate it. <laughs> like that's what so, all of them feel like. Not for not, no. I felt like She Hulk really felt very episodic. Like you know, yeah. each episode was really was really self contained, and I, feel, I, and that's maybe that's why it's really, I really liked it a lot more than a lot of people did, is because it felt more like a TV show. You know, like it felt like a legal TV show where episode, like okay, this is the case for this episode, and then it gets going from there, and. Yeah, I, I enjoyed that part, and one of the other ones, like, all the other ones, I'm trying to think, oh, at the first season of Loki, though, I really enjoyed, and it felt, I, I don't know, there's just something charming about it, and, um, uh, WandaVision, WandaVision was great, maybe they just freaking started off stronger, and WandaVision was each episode was self-contained, because it was themed off a certain, uh, type of TV show, where there was, again, an interconnecting plot that was going on in the background that led up to the season finale, so it was good, Yeah, you know? Loki was kind of, the first season of Loki was kind of like that, too, where, like, yeah, you know, like there was an overarching there, thing, but it wasn't pounded into your head about the goddamn TVA it, no. every five seconds. Yeah, and it felt and it felt like more just it, each thing felt more self-contained. You know, like this season two, each thing is just like okay, now I got to sit around for a week and wait before I watch the next episode. Where the other one's like, oh, I wonder what they got cooking up for us this time. I don't know, like that. Those feel like two different feelings. You know, we're feeling like you just got cut off by at the end of this episode of Loki. Or the feeling that, like, oh, this is, like, an episode, and I just finished an episode in the show, and now i got to wait for the next episode. You know? Yeah. I feel like those are two distinct two distinct kind of feelings. Because, again, streaming is completely new. It's only 10 years so far. Like, so, you know, it's kind of a new science almost. I'm going to ask you a question, and it's kind of a trick question. Because you don't have the information I have, but I'll... I'll uh... I'll ask you no, again I'm, after the news. I love making I, I love making myself sound like an asshole that assumes that he knows things he doesn't actually know. Yeah. I read too many things on Wikipedia. Do you think that Disney Plus will go away? No. Yeah. I don't well, think it'll go away, but what I think is will happen is that they'll just stop making content for it. And because like I think the I, I think here's the thing. Like I think that if nin, like like Nintendo, right? I think that if Nintendo released a service called like Nintendo Plus or whatever and you can get all of the all the games in one place and you had to pay for it, right? I think a lot of people would pay for that. But that's what's going on here at, like at Disney. A lot of people really like Disney content. Like sometimes I have made have gone back and watched some of the older princess movies cuz I really appreciate their the hardcore animation and just how colorful they are. You know, they're really beautiful pieces of art if you look at them. Like like that. And uh, you know, having all that content accessible in one area is a really big boon. And I think a lot of people will pay money for that. So I, I don't think Disney plus will go away. No, I don't think this online con online streaming library will go away, but I do think that the studios that independently that they make content for will go away and it'll just be called Disney studio again. And there won't be any differentiation between like, Oh, this is a Disney plus series. I think that stuff will go away. Okay. We'll come if back that to that. that. We'll come back to that. Okay. Got it. All right. So next article, uh, Mahershala. I hope I say that right. I don't want to say his name. Mahershala Ali was reportedly ready to leave Blade. Uh, the early script had him as the fourth lead. 
Imagine that. <laughs> you're playing Blade in a movie called Blade, and you're the fourth lead character. Mm. Uh, Maharshala Ali was reportedly ready to walk away from Marvel Studios' Blade after one version of the script saw him as the fourth lead in the film. According to a recent article from Variety, Ali almost left Marvel's Blade reboot over script issues. Kevin Feige announced a new Blade movie was in the works with Ali at San Diego Comic-Con in 2019. However, progress has been stalled since then as a number of writers and directors have been hired and then departed from the project. One person familiar with the production told Variety that, at one point, the script for the upcoming Blade movie, quote, morphed into a narrative led by women and filled with life lessons. As a result, Ali's Blade was downgraded to the fourth lead in the movie. Ali was ready to exit the project before Feige hired Michael Green, who co-wrote 2017's Logan and 2017's Blade Runner 2049. Uh... I guess I said that right. I didn't even. I I thought I said it wrong, but I was right. Blade Runner twenty forty nine. Jesus. Uh, to rewrite the script at this time, Ali is still attached to the picture. Blade currently has a release date of February fourteenth, twenty twenty five. So in February twenty twenty one, Stacy Ozai Kufor was hired to write the script for Blade, while Bassam Tariq was hired to direct the movie. Tariq left the project approximately a year later and was replaced by Jan Demange. While Michael Starbury was uh, was brought on to rewrite the script, Nick Paul Pizzolato then joined the production in April 2023 as another writer before Green was brought in October 2023. Bro, that was this month, this last month. Uh, filming on Blade was supposed to begin in June of this year. However, production was delayed due to the Writers Guild of America strike, and now the Screen Actors Guild of America and veterans blah 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 strike. According to Variety, Marvel is now trying to make the movie with a budget of less than a hundred million dollars. So far, Ali has only had an uncredited voice cameo appearance in the MCU as Blade in the mid-credits scene of 2021's Eternals. I'm just gonna say it. I don't remember that. Uh, it was the, uh, when, uh, when Jon Snow got the, the sword. Okay. I remember that scene. They were on the hill, right? Or whatever. Or they were somewhere with them. I don't know. That was the end. Yeah. I I remember. He was in like an office. Okay. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say, go ahead. I'm just going to say, I'm going to say it. Just say it, bro. If, if you have writers who are willing to make your title character, the fourth lead in a movie. They deserve to be paid like shit. I'm just yeah. saying. They don't that's deserve the writers... they don't deserve it. They don't deserve the money. Okay? And that's not really the writer's job, right? Like it's not their job to like entirely take a script and then and then skewer it and then do something else with it unless like they're in dire dire straits. I don't well, think you Blade know was it was a cla- dire... you know it was a collaborative effort with directors and whatever and and who knows yeah, what's yeah. coming down from the studio saying we you know we have to have this big push politically to do this and this and this like you can integrate life lessons and have strong lead characters that are women or whatever. But you can't then say, I'm making a Blade movie and my main character is Misty Knight. No, it's not. Your main character is Blade. <laughs> also, And also, instead of killing the vampires, they just say, just stop sucking blood. It makes people feel bad. And they're like, you're no, right. And no, they- instead, <laughs> instead, they start a Twitter uh, rampage to get vampires canceled. Uh, yeah, you're right. No, that, 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 that's, it's, it's combined. That that's what it that's what it would be like. Hey, this is me fighting the war right here, bro. I'm fighting the bad guys right now. Like, bro, you're just typing on your computer. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I don't know. Like, there there's there's a place for, again, like you know, representation and strong female leads and whatever. But like. Now, now it's to you know in, in this scenario, it's like the point yeah, of like you can't oh, you can't write it in like you can't write those things in. That's yeah. The we we have guys, things. we have a strong minority lead, a strong black lead in this movie. That's not good enough. We need to make him the fourth lead and replace the first three leads with strong women. Maybe and make one he, like disabled. It, maybe make no, it, one. It's uh, an, the problem is it's like the name of the titular it's the character in the movie name right if you're going to, to you're going to see blade 
so you can see Blade kill vampires with cool swords and look really badass and say something really cool, right? That's like yeah. the idea, right? Okay. And so this this these are the kind of things like where this shouldn't happen because this is like a vampire action movie, bro. Like it's underworld. They have they made four underworlds. Why did they make four underworlds? Because people wanted to see vampires and werewolves shoot the fuck out of each other for two hours and you know hot chicks and latex and all that kind of stuff. Wow, so you know, you're it, telling me they were trying to remake Underworld because uh, they wanted a strong female lead instead of just, you know, telling people to watch it. Underworld. I just, you know, no, they didn't. They just, Underworld was fantastic, bro. Was right, badass. right. That's my point. Like, <laughs> why, why do they feel like they need to make Blade into that? I don't, I don't know. Like, because they're dumb, because they're dumb and they don't live in reality. Here's because what, here's what, in, because they, they grew up in a, they grew up in a really nice place in L.A., they went to college for English. They got a writing major. They went to college for that. They inter their parents got them an internship, and now they're funneled back into the system, and they have no contact with any normal people that like understand like what comedy is. Yeah, or know, how society I'm works. Some, I'm huh. just making some assumptions here, but I kind of feel like that's what's going on when someone can write these kind of things and thinks like, okay, like yeah, this is something that people will be okay with. Also, there's another problem too. Is like there's kind of like a rebellion to it, where oh, I think this is okay. And I don't care what other people think. It's like, well, what about all these other people that work in the movie industry that are working on your set that need like jobs and want to get paid from like this movie so that they can go on and like live their normal lives? And it, cause you're, you know, you get paid up for this right most of the time. So it's, it, you know. Here's what I think happened, right? Go ahead. I think they're working on Blade, they're working on the script. And yep. while they're working on it, they see this TV show called The Book of Boba Fett. And they're like, mm -hmm. holy shit. This changes everything. You can make a show with a character's name in the title of the show and make it so that they're not in half the show. That's brilliant. I'm going to make a Blade movie <laughs> where Blade has 20 minutes of screen time. I, I, I think that's how the, I think that's what, exactly what happened. We could blame the book of Boba Fett for this. Yeah, the book of Boba Fett is where this all it's where it all went wrong. That's I was started. That my, that's where my heart started to sink. Yeah. Speaking <laughs> more of Marvel and their troubles, uh, Ant Man three and She Hulk VFX VFX problems were because of pre production issues and shifting release dates. So Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantum Mania and She Hulk: Attorney at Law's VFX problems were largely due to pre production issues and shifting release dates. At Jesus Christ. Why do they put the fucking title of the article and then just repeat it in a sentence? Fuck you, I don't know. article. <laughs> Write better. Uh, Marvel Studios She-Hulk attorney at law and Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania were both criticized for their visual effects both critic by both critics and fans upon their prospective releases. I'm going to stop right there and say, I don't remember people criticizing Ant-Man and the Wasp's VFX aside from the look of MODOK, which I think was a choice and not... Uh, necessarily just from bad vfx a lot of people praised them you were a huge fan of them um but yeah no i thought the yeah i thought a lot of the trippy aliens and stuff looked great a lot of the blobs and stuff there was a lot of goo involved in that movie and that's always hard to do in vfx and like you know yeah moto did look like shit like he looked like a meme i don't know how to describe it but he looked he looked like yeah. a living meme it seemed intentional like, to me yeah i'm mean, showing his butt off and everything like that like i think they were trying to get a rise out of him i don't know but i don't know i I think they but, uh, they, yeah, they read comics and out. they said Modoc's kind of a fucking joke. Let's make him exactly what he is. Yeah, but also he he looked cool when he had his mask on and he was doing actual Modoc stuff. But I don't know. But I like that in those houses too. I always think about those houses when I think Quantum Mania yeah. that they lived in that like had like four legs and they could shoot the guns and stuff. I thought they looked so cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but, oh yeah, since... that alien bar. That was that. That was pretty cool. That whole cantina scene was kind of like Star Wars and yeah, yeah, a lot of very Star Wars going on. Yep, it was it was, it was great because I had Paul Rudd in it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> since then, uh, Marvel VFX workers have come forward about poor work conditions, fourteen-hour days with no overtime, and more, leading them to unanimously vote to unionize in September 2023. A new report from Variety states. The Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania's VFX issues were largely due to the last minute to a last minute release date shift. Originally, The Marvels was supposed to come out in February 2023, while Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania was scheduled to release in July 2023. The two films switched places after Ant-Man 3 was quote deemed further along than The Marvels, which then bumped up Quantumania's post-production schedule by approximately four and a half months. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, sorry, that's funny to me. Uh, the Marvels, meanwhile, was again delayed until November 10th, 2023. Uh, so, uh, do, do, do. Variety's article states that Marvel films are known for coming down to the wire, given Kevin Feige's ability to, quote, uh, foam the runway and land a plane that way, uh, says one executive producer familiar with how the company operates, but this level of unfinished was unprecedented and would be noted in scathing reviews when the tent pole uh, with the $200 million budget opened 11 days after the premiere. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's what happened with Quantumania, I guess. It, it came out four and a half months early, and uh, people weren't prepared for that. Uh, what happened with She-Hulk... And I know I didn't see a lot of people complaining about, like, the VFX. I saw a lot of people complaining that, one, MODOK looked really stupid. Yeah. And two, like, a lot of people said that... I saw a lot of people on the internet saying, oh, wow, Kang looked really cool, and, like, all the effects for Kang were really awesome, especially, like, when his face would transition. Well, and for the and, amount of VFX shots in that movie, like, it all yeah, looked the, really the whole good. Thing was, yeah, yeah, the whole, whole thing was VFX, basically. I, I think a lot of people were just complaining about the usual dumb bullshit on the internet. Well, like, it looked oh, it's much wild. better than the Flash's visual effects. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. The Flash, intentional. You know, Flash, did, Flash didn't, unfortunately, suffer from, from a lack of having not having Paul Rudd in it. So, well, you know, yeah. And there's that. And it has a uh, uh, cast as the main character. So, it's not Paul Rudd. They should recast Paul Rudd as a Flash. <laughs> he would probably make a really great Flash, to be honest. To be honest, yeah. he probably would. Uh, he'd probably be a better <laughs> Jay Garrick, though. Yep. Yeah. Um, but yeah, according to Variety, anyway. She Hulk, attorney at law, originally didn't include a flashback scene that saw Tiatiana Maslani's Jennifer Walters transform into She Hulk until the eighth episode. After reviewing the footage, Marvel decided they needed this scene in the pilot episode and then told the VFX team to make the change with little time to spare. The so called. Yeah, I, I, sorry, just a comment. It really seems like She Hulk should turn into She Hulk in the first or second episode. Maybe that's something that should be important. That's very strange. They didn't really consider, like, you know, the transformation part of the hulking, the whole hulking thing. You know, maybe it's a little important, essential. Anyway, please continue. Uh, yeah. Uh, this uh, one source involved with the production said the so called bad virtual effects we see was because of half baked scripts. This is not Victoria Alonzo's. Uh, post-production visual effects and animation for Marvel Studios. This is not Victoria. Okay, they're referring to Victoria Alonso, who is the formal, former president of physical post-production visual effects and animation for Marvel Studios. Uh, that is Kevin Feige. And even uh, above Kevin, those issues should be addressed in pre-production. The timeline is not allowing the Marvel executives to sit with the material. Gotcha. Okay. So if you thought the virtual effects, the visual effects in She-Hulk and Ant-Man were bad, there's your explanation. Have fun with this article. Uh, here's a here's the article we were talking about before. Oh yeah, sorry, I just looking over the fact like, hey guys, uh, we should have the transformation scene for She-Hulk actually instead of having it at the very end in a flash. Oh, we should have it at the first episode. That's kind of important, actually. Oh, man. Oh. That was a big shocker, Ow. that one, yeah. It is. Oof, gee, that hurt my soul a little bit. I just died a little bit inside. That's like, that's, oh. Oof, okay, please. Anyway, continue. Oof. All right. Yeah. Uh, so Marvel <laughs> Marvel reportedly <laughs> consider, is, cons is reportedly considering bringing back the original Avengers stars for another movie. So Marvel, st I'm not reading the same fucking headline again. Fuck you. Keep going. Dude. Stop doing that shit. <laughs> it's um, back all the characters. You know the names of the actors of the characters? According to a them. recent article by Variety, sources close to Marvel say the studio is considering getting the gang back together uh, of Earth's Mightiest Heroes for another Avengers movie. While Marvel has not uh, yet committed to the idea, this would seemingly include Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man, Chris Evans' Captain America, Scarlett Johansson's Black Widow, Jeremy Renner's Hawkeye, Mark Ruffalo's Hulk, and Chris Hemsworth's Thor. Um, so, Robert Downey Jr. and Scarlett Johansson's characters were both killed during Endgame, while Chris Evans' Captain America ended the film as an elderly man. However, Marvel uh, Comics constantly kills off popular characters and then resurrects them through uh, various machinations. 
the introduction of the MCU's multiverse, which Loki's second season has continued to explore, could be one possible way to bring the deceased characters back. Though nothing has been confirmed by the studio at this time, it's also possible the original Avengers stars could appear in one of Marvel's upcoming ensemble pictures, 2026's Kang Dynasty or 2027's Secret, in, uh, Secret Wars. Uh, should Marvel move forward with the idea, it will likely come with an expensive price tag as Downer Jr.'s upfront salary for 2013's Iron Man 3 was reportedly in the $25 million range. Johansson has also been vocal about being done with making Marvel movies, as she told The Hollywood Reporter back in 2023, April of 2023. Uh, she said, that chapter is over. I kind of did all I had uh, to do. Also, coming back and playing a character again and again like that over a decade of time is such a unique experience just to interrupt really quick didn't she also sue marvel and or disney for something related to her pay wasn't that something that was going on isn't there that, a little bit of bad blood there now that was going on uh with miss marvel i mean not miss marvel jesus fuck my brain with uh, black widow there was some shit yeah there was a problem but I, I there was also an article that just came out like 10 minutes ago hold on i'm gonna find it uh pink bonk boop pop pink um about her suing someone else. <laughs> yep. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Pink, pink. Um, Scarlett Johansson uh takes legal action against an AI app using her likeness. So there you go. Um, she is suing an AI app for lo- using her likeness. Uh, I don't know if this is just a Hollywood thing where like they all hate AI now or some shit, but. There you go. Yeah, you I think it. I think I think they are afraid. Of, like I just, you know, I understand why they're afraid of it. Like it's hard for me to formulate my thoughts on AI, so I won't formulate it here. But yeah, I understand why. Also, um, this article is also pointless. It's just a bunch of speculation. That yeah. Marvel hasn't said anything. Marvel hasn't confirmed anything. It's just people making guesses. I think. Yeah, but the problem is for me personally. I know the only reason they can do this is through time travel or the multiverse, and hopefully it's just not time travel and they just do the multiverse. It'll be the multiverse. Stuff. Like I it's entirely possible. Like an, I could see them doing an Avengers What If. Like that's something I could see in my head now that like I've calmed down from the rage. But my, you know, the only way they can pull heroes. it off. Go ahead. The only way they can pull it off is if they they treat it like an episode of television where like. You know, you you end up in this world, or or like say Iron Man ends up in our world, and people are like, "Holy shit, bro, Tony, yo!" And he's like, "Bro, I don't know who the fuck any of you people are," and like whatever. And then they end up having to work together to complete a mission, and then you never see him again. Mm. That's the yeah. only way to work. Yeah. Go ahead. But well, whatever you were saying. No, uh, I just you know again, I'm more stoked for X Men. Fantastic Four. It's something new, like a new team, a new storyline, like, you know, just a new world, a new universe that doesn't have all these different stories that I need to be thinking about. Like, oh, is this tied to that movie or is this tied to that movie? And, you know, it's just, I don't know. Old man, yeah. Craig. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Um, so back to that article about um, Ant Man and the Wasp is switching, uh, switching dates with the Marvels. Well, maybe it had something to do with the next article. The Marvel's test screenings had middling reviews, and the director began a new movie during post-production. So, (laughs) according to a recent report, again by Variety, Marvel held a public test screening in Texas for the Marvels in June 2023. Okay, so I take it back. I didn't reread this article. It had nothing to do with the release date switching. This was way later than when that happened. Uh, The movie, which opens in the U.S. later this month, actually uh, next week on Thursday, we're going to go see it, uh, received, quote, middling reviews from audience members at the time. Variety's article also states that Nia DaCosta, who directed the MCU sequel, began working on another movie in London, the Tessa Thompson-led Hedda, while the Marvels was still in post-production. Uh, a source familiar with the production told Variety, if you're directing a $250 million movie, it's kind of weird for the director to leave with a few months to go. Um, that's it? That's the whole article? What the foot? What the foot? Jesus, mm-hmm. alright. I thought they were going to talk about like all the things they did to make the movie better. Instead, they just talk shit about the director. Yeah. Uh, anyway, this doesn't inspire hope for us going to see the movie We're next week. We're seeing that movie next, next week, right? Next Thursday. Yeah. Yes, which also 
brings me to this, okay? I don't know who came up with this plan. I have no idea who thought it was a good idea or if it's even relevant. But it really irritates me that the season finale of Loki comes out literally almost the same hour that the Marvels comes out. Well, well yeah. We're seeing the Marvels at 6.50 p.m. next Thursday. Mm-hmm. Loki comes out at 6 o'clock next Thursday. So what, are you going to watch Loki and then drive over to the theater? No, no, because I won't make it in time. Because yeah. Loki's episodes are like an hour long. In 46 minutes. And Well, I mean, and, and it fluctuates too. Like, they're not always yeah, the same does. length. It does, which is, again, something I think that is a huge, like, it, I, is a much bigger detractor than I think anyone realizes, is the fact that these, like, episodes are not uniform in length. I think that's Yeah, I so think. I, I'm hoping that Loki, of the final season, the final episode of the season of Loki, has nothing to do with the Marvels and doesn't lead into it, because if it does, there's going to be some weird confusion shit happening, I'm sure, in the movie. My guess is it has nothing to do with it, which is good. Mm-hmm. shouldn't. Right? Like, they should be in the same world, but, like, you shouldn't have to watch season two of Loki to get what's happening in the Marvels, right? Especially because it's coming out so close to this, and most people aren't going to have seen old Loki when they go see the Marvel. Hmm. Unless Marvel's stupid, and they're just fucking shit up and not planning anything correctly, which is entirely the case. Well, actually, we know it doesn't lead into the Marvels because the Marvel was supposed to come out in February, and supposed to come out. Loki was always supposed to come out this month. So, never mind. But it's still irritating. I don't like it. Yeah. Okay. Next article. Yeah, well, I'll just go see the movie and go home and watch Loki, I guess. It's season finale, but I probably won't watch it until Tuesday before, so I guess it really doesn't bother me. That. That's why it's not, it doesn't bother me that much. Yeah. Uh, Marvel has reportedly considered replacing Jonathan Majors Kang with Doctor Doom. I'm not reading the same fucking thing again, man. Why does it keep... According to a recent article from Variety... Bro, Variety is on a roll with Marvel. Uh, Marvel Mm -hmm. Studios executives met in Palm Springs in September of 2023 for the company's annual retreat. Their executives discussed how to handle Kang the Conqueror, a character who was supposed to be the MCU's next major adversary, but whose future is now in doubt given Major's ongoing legal situation and upcoming trial for domestic violence charges. Variety's article states that executives have discussed moving away from Majors' Kang in the next phase of the MCU and instead focusing on Doctor Doom, a notorious Fantastic Four villain. This idea, however, is already proving difficult as Majors' character has already been introduced and established in the Loki television series and 2023's Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Majors is also supposed to star as the main villain in 2026's Avengers The Kang Dynasty. Um... One source close to Marvel told Variety, Marvel is truly fucked with the whole Kang angle, and they haven't had an opportunity to rewrite until very recently because of the writer strike, but I don't see a path to how they move forward with them. Uh, another source close to the studio said that Marvel was already considering moving away from Majors' as Kang after Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania failed to make a big splash at the box office with a budget of $200 million and the third Ant-Man movie... Uh, made approximately $476 million at the Worldwide Box Office when it was released earlier this year. Uh, they said it gave people pause given that Quantumania didn't exactly land. At this time, Marvel has not confirmed any plans for Majors Kang moving forward. Doctor Doom has also not been formally introduced into the MCU as of yet and no actor is attached to play the character. Although the MCU's Fantastic Four re- reboot is currently scheduled to be released on May 2nd, 2025. So um, I'm just going to go against everything they said there. And tell you that uh, it doesn't matter how much they've done with Kang so far, they could easily pivot. That's the whole point of a multiverse, dumb fucks. Like, you can do whatever the fuck you want. You can have Doctor Doom, one of the most powerful characters in all of comics, one of the best villains ever made. You can have this mother sucker come out and just fucking destroy Kang, squeeze his head to a bloody pulp, and just be like, bitches, I'm the real villain. Fuck you. Hmm. So I'm saying, like, you can do so many things. Yeah, the Kang, I'm, I promise you, Avengers Kang Dynasty has not been written yet. You can change it. Yeah, I think, like, I, you know, I just, looking at this again from a legal standpoint, 
Uh, he's been he's been dropped by his PR studio. He's been dropped by his talent agency. He's been dropped by a lot of different. He's been dropped by two a couple. He, I think he's been dropped by another law firm. And his lawyer is out here saying the most lawyery stuff about his current situation, and that is not a good sign. Like if if, if there was anything about if this was this, <laughs> your lawyer doesn't say anything when things are going great. Okay, when they're out there saying, oh, he absolutely rejects all this, blah, 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 his personal, his personal self has been assaulted, like, that's, that's such the lawyer speak for, yeah, man, he's, like, just trying to figure this all out, and yeah, I, I, mean, I just don't think it's, I don't think it's good, and, you know, Disney, again, like, what they're doing, like, with Blade, like, they're trying to obviously go down a very, polit- they're trying to go down a very political route here, and trying to, like, you know, make signals to other people that they believe in certain things, and then when you have a leading your actor who goes out and actively beats and treats women like shit, it's, like, really hard to balance those two things, you know? And, and the thing is, bro, we know you can have other versions of your character from other universes. We had three different Peter Parkers with all different actors. You can recast yeah. Kang. It's recast not that Kang crazy. From that- the actor from Guardians of the Galaxy three, that dude was fucking awesome. But oh yeah, we should get more of that. We should get more of that guy. That guy's pretty good. Um, yeah. but also, also to your point about Blade, bro, it's so easy to make Blade political. He's a vampire. He lives forever. You can have him growing up during slave times if you want. Like, bro, you can have a, a exclusively political thing. Remember that that sequence, and uh, I know people don't want to remember it because it was a bad movie. But remember that sequence in Wolverine Origins. I mean, X-Men Origins Wolverine, right? Where you see Wolverine, like, fighting in all the different wars, right? Like, the Civil War and all this shit. Like, growing up as a young child through all these, like, major, major world events. Bro, you can do the same thing with Blade. Mm. The vampire. It's rap. Fuck. Hey, guys. We, um, we want to make this ultra-political movie with the women lead, and even though our main character is a black guy who, uh, can live forever, we can, uh, we can write this awesome sequence about him, like, helping people through the Underground Railroad, and, uh, we can do these <laughs> things about these, you know, the, the riots and the, and, 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 and the, the Civil Rights Movement, but we're not gonna do any of that. We're just gonna have a strong woman right there in the lead of our Blade movie. Anyway, bro, I'm just saying I can write better fucking movies than most of these dumb fudges. I don't uh, know about all that. It, you'd be surprised how hard writing is until you actually start the process and you're halfway through and you realize you can't write good scenes that connect each other and you don't have any good transition pieces and it's hard for you to find char- like you know describe character dialogue where they're emotionally extrapolating and stuff like that in a way that is human and relatable. I think it's um, much easier are- if you have a plan. Yeah, that's true. Absolutely true. And I think that's where we're suffering from right now is that nobody knows what's going on and nobody really is doing anything right. And my mom is texting me saying she needs help. Oh, God. All right. Are you going to help her? Yeah, I need to go help her. Um, okay. Are we, starting, are we doing Lucky right now? No, I have, a, I have a final article. Okay, you read that article and I'll be back. Sorry. I can't. Oh. It's important for you to be here to follow up on my oh. question from before. But I'll wait. Okay. I'll wait. I'll stall. Can, Don't okay, worry. Okay, hopefully I'll be quick. Bye. Yeah. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys about what I did this weekend. Um, so I went to a Halloween party on Saturday, and I'm not a big party goer, as you can tell probably by looking at me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I went to this uh, Halloween party. It was it was with my friends, and I knew certain, some people there and whatever. Um, and I went by myself, you know, and uh, dressed up like a Jedi, like you know, like Mace Windu, but not actually like Mace Windu. I just looked like this. You know, I'm not bald. I can't be Mace. Um, but I, you know, I had the, I had his robes and his lightsaber. And, you know, obviously people really like the lightsaber. It's a major, it's a major hit at parties. But I'm not. Um, <laughs> I talked to people for a little bit and like, uh, you know, talked to people I, I'm familiar with and um, whatever. But I, I'm not big, you know, for parties. I don't drink. I don't do anything. So like at, at a certain point, like I felt like I had talked to everybody enough. And so I just kind of just started standing by myself in random places. Then, like, eventually someone would come over and try to talk to me, but, like, not very often. So, you know, I just kind of, like, isolated myself. I, I did talk to somebody who um, said I seem very shy and uh, and reserved, and I was like, eh. You know, it's kind of, I get awkward sometimes, so it's, it's easier to be by myself. Um, so that's what I did Saturday, and then Sunday, we went. Uh, we went to the ocean. To the ocean. We went to the uh, to the beach. We took our 
our little doggo. And oh, welcome back. Thank you. I'm just talking about what I did for the weekend just to buy time. Oh yeah, you guys were at the Monterey, right? I yeah. Saw your yeah. Your waifu was posting photos. It looked like good food. Yeah, yeah. We went to Monterey Mon and uh, my, oh, Monterey is such good food, bro. My dog ran up and down the beach. He had a lot of fun. Uh, that must have been cute. I'm same. not a I'm not a let your dog off the leash person. Um, mm -hmm. because I don't trust other people's dogs and I don't necessarily trust my dog. Like I haven't, you know, I've trained him well, but not well enough to trust him running around on a beach. He's not familiar with around people. He's not familiar with. So yeah. I keep him on the leash and I just run with him. Um, so he has fun. And then, uh, yeah, he find he found some dead crabs. He mm -hmm. found a dead furry animal of some kind. I didn't, I didn't investigate to see what it was. I, I made sure you were not near that, but you some can always tell because yeah. <clears throat> you know, there's a bunch of flies there and then just some dead furry thing. And I'm just like, oh, we're not going there. Uh, but yeah, you know, he, he had a fun. And then we uh, walked to Fisherman's Wharf over there because we were only like a 10 minute walk, 15 minute walk from there. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, we walked over there. And you guys go to the aquarium? No, we've been there a couple of times. And uh, I mean, it's not worth the money to go many, many times. Like, it's not like they get new yeah. sea creatures in there. Yeah, yeah. I think like if you live in the area and you want to support the aquarium, probably because it's like really helpful for local businesses and stuff like that. Yeah, but not all the time for sure. Like I, I would go to Monterey just because it's a beautiful city. Yeah, just go that. enjoy the beach, enjoy the you know, some nice hotel. Like our our hotel room had a fireplace, which is cool. Uh, and then you I'm, think our property values over here are fucked? Wait till you see how expensive a house is in Monterey. Oh yeah. Um. Yeah, and then, yeah, we just, you know, I like going to, like, the wharf and whatever, like, the boardwalk over there, because, you know, there's, like, lots of good food. Um, yep, the most they, important part, they got a little gird, they got a little gird deli outpost out there. Yeah, spent $9 oh. on half a chicken breast for my dog, because he's spoiled, when, you know, I could mm -hmm. buy two pounds of chicken breast for that amount of money, but whatever. Um, <laughs> that's, mm -hmm. the, that's the nature of it. So, but yeah, 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 so we just did that, and then uh, I, w I took it uh, off Monday, because of because we were there Sunday, so we just stayed the night there and came home Monday. Uh, we had a guy out to fix our heater, uh, and he didn't. He left. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. It got fixed today though. So classic apartment stuff. Uh, well, it's like a it's like a townhome condo, and like we have we have separate thermostats for upstairs and downstairs. And so yeah. like the guy thought he could bring like a universal thing for it, but he needed a specialty one. They had to order it because we're not like it's not like a normal. Uh, power blower thing yeah anyway so here's the last article and here's why i asked you the question disney is gonna buy the remaining stake in hulu from comcast mm. so uh the landscape of streaming services is about to change once again uh today it was announced that the walt disney company that. will be acquiring the 33 percent stake that comcast nbc universal currently owns in hulu this deal is in motion after Comcast exercised its right under the uh, put-call arrangement between the two companies. The pending deal is expected to be finalized by December 1st, and we'll see Disney tentatively pay NBC Universal $8.61 billion. Disney and Comcast have been in their current agreement over Hulu since 2019. You were going to say something? No, I was just saying, like, wow, that's a lot of money. I mean, it's, it's a lot of money... Um, with no context, but then when you consider that uh, Twitter was bought for forty-four billion dollars, it doesn't seem as much. Like I'd much rather, money. I'd much rather own, money, I'd much rather own uh, Hulu than Twitter. But still, a lot of money though. Oh yeah, yeah, like yeah. a lot of money, like which an unconceivably large amount of money. Which makes me, as a Manchester United fan, even more angry. When Manchester United is valued at three billion dollars, we had someone offer to buy it for six billion pay off our billion dollars in debt and invest another two billion into our infrastructure and team and the people who own our team the leeches who own our motherfucking team said no because in five years it might be worth 10 billion yeah. and then the they're going to accept they're going to accept a 25 percent stake and continue to leech off our team how is sacramento republic doing they're doing fantastic they are in the finals of the west and if they win they will go to the championship game uh, they play this Saturday, uh, and because they're the number one seed uh, this season, they will play every playoff game at home, so they'll be at home this Saturday, and if they win, they'll be at home for the final. You gonna go see them? Not this Saturday, because I'm going to a concert. 
No, there you go. But yeah, if they if they win and they make it to the final, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. We have a little FC like right next to you. They're like a club, right? That's what they call themselves. I think I saw that. that Wait, that's yeah. All all most football teams are called clubs. So like any like uh, if you I don't know if you're familiar with any teams, but like Manchester United is called MUFC, Manchester United Football Club, uh, AC mm-hmm. Milan Athletic Club, Milan. Like all they're all called clubs. FC Barcelona Football Club, Barcelona. It's, everything is an FC. They're all football clubs. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what they call me up. And it's like probably like 15 minutes from here to go to a game. Hmm. Not bad. Uh, anyway, under quote, quote, unquote, quote, 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 under the terms of the put call arrangement by December 1st, uh, Disney expects it will buy, uh, it will pay NBCU approximately 8.6 billion representing NBCU's percentage of the 27.5 billion guaranteed floor value for Hulu that was set when the companies entered into their agreement in 2019, minus the anticipated outstanding capital call. This is all boring shit. Anyway, they're going to buy it. Okay, question. Will Disney Plus... Like that that article just reeks of capitalism. Sorry, like and not like in a, like a cringe way. I'm saying like this is the most capitalist thing yeah. ever. Like oh, it's a foot call arrangement. All oh, blog by on the 14th day, on the 13th degree of the sun, 2.23 shares. <laughs> it's just, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so will Disney Plus and Hulu merge? The fate of Hulu in Disney's portfolio has been speculated about a lot as of late, with rumors suggesting that the streaming service would be merged with the company's all-ages streaming service, Disney+. Plus. Earlier this year, Disney CEO Bob Iger confirmed that there are plans in the work to offer the services in a bundle, although an exact date for this has yet to be set. That's stupid. It is offered in a bundle. It's offered. Yeah. Uh, well, we, can, we continue to see... Uh, we can, While we continue to offer Disney+, Plus, Hulu, and ESPN as standalone options, this is a log- logistical progression. But yeah, bro... They offer them all together. You can buy the bundle of Disney Plus, Hulu, and ESPN Plus together already. I don't know what they're fucking talking about. Like, that exists. I fucking do that shit now. Because um, I have to have live TV to watch some Manchester United games. That's what we That's what we have. We have the bundle. Yeah. yeah anyway. I watch, the ESPN, I watch the ESPN anyway. I, I watch ESPN Plus for because they play in certain cups that are only on ESPN Plus, like the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup. But then they play in the Champions League, which is on Paramount Plus. And then they play in the Premier League, which is either on NBC or on Peacock. So I have to have every fucking streaming service. So let me ask you a question. Do you think the reason the cable is still here is because old people are too afraid to cancel their cable? Uh, I think it has a lot to do with old people, but I think it also has a lot to do with... I think it'll still sustain through the, you know, the baby boomers and Gen X and whatever that. I don't uh, think it's going to see the end of this decade. Well, I, mean, like, I, I think I think that streaming has evolved into new cable, right? And essentially, yeah. people are buying instead of buying cable from Directv or Dish or what Comcast, people are buying cable through YouTube, through Hulu, through whatever. Like they're like I pay for Hulu's live TV service, which is essentially cable. Mm. Um, but it's better than cable, right? Yeah. Because you know it's not like traditional cable where like you have to like DVR things. Like I like I have access to their entire streaming library while also having access to live everything I want. Yeah, the simulcast. So I I think and and I'm sure YouTube works the same way. Um, with like their thing, their YouTube TV thing, and like I think the 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 old like football like red zone direct tv package that people used to get direct tv for uh is now at youtube so like you don't even need it so they'll phase those things out but but essentially people will still have cable it'll just be through sh- yep. i think i think well they pay for internet and then you don't get all the streaming services and then the boxes and then you know and then eventually we'll get like little wood like just with, like damn like the fire stick you know but it'll be like that but it'll be sold by like a third party company that has all the different streaming services on them and it'll be just like cable like you said yeah and I then mean, you'll just well, be, and people have them like, through their channels. people have them through their ps5s and through yeah. smart tvs and everything else like, i use my ps5 for more streaming than i do for freaking um for then gaming because it's such a good entertainment platform like you can switch between all the different streaming apps so easily you know like they're all listed on there you can pick it right up on the last episodes you're playing on even if you turn it off it's great i have apple it has like- i have apple t and apple t but i don't have i don't pay for apple yeah. that makes sense yeah. <laughs> 
so yeah, uh, this leads to the question of will Disney sell its networks? Earlier this year, Iger also indicated that although the company does not hope to sell its stake in ESPN or Hulu, it might be open to making sales for some of its linear cable networks such as ABC, FX, and Freeform. Uh, he said, we're going to be open-minded there too, not necessarily about spinning ESPN off, but about looking for strategic partners that can either help us with distribution or content. But we want to stay in the sports business. Sports is very, very attractive media, and we have a unique position, and we feel that we should stay in it. Um, did Bob Iger say this? Yeah, he said this. He said, over time, when I came back, uh, I was open-minded about Hulu because there is this agreement with Comcast that actually calls for a transaction, their stake to us sometime in 2024, and I didn't want that to be an automatic. I wanted to look at that objectively. I spent a lot of time looking at that as part of the future of our streaming business and ultimately concluded that we would be better off having Hulu than not having Hulu. Wow. He said, I looked at the numbers and they said, we're doing well, guys. So, yeah. It. that's the news so do you think again do you think right. that now disney plus would go away and hulu would pick up all of those things that are on there now like they would merge I think, or i think they would merge in, i think they'll emerge in some like some way where you just enter into it like the disney portal through hulu or vice versa the hulu portal mm-hmm. through disney um it all just depends on how they want to do it do you think costs would go down if they had everything on one platform though for the consumer? No, no, for them. They don't give a fuck for the consumer. Exactly. No. <laughs> the fuck? Like they could, they could charge you twice basically if they merge these. Like if they don't merge these things, like they charge you twice forever if they wanted to. Like you know, for most people, like you know, we, you and I got the bundle. That's what they're trying to do. But there's a bunch of other people that don't have the bundle or places where the bundle isn't offered. Yeah, and, but they can charge yeah. the. They can still like charge the same amount or just increase Hulu by ten dollars a month or whatever by integrating yeah. it, and then if they. I don't know, get it, whatever. I don't know what they pay for, for their, for their, um, like housing for their data and stuff. Yeah. Or like if they own it all already, like, but you, you know, they have to have administrative costs and if they could just bundle that all into one thing, they can get better costs. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. But no, they, the consumers will, I mean, they, it would, they would only do it to, to pad their bottom line, not to, yeah. not to benefit consumers. No, never. So no one does it anymore. <laughs> Yeah, but anyway, that's all the news. We'll talk about Loki finally. Yeah, season f- two, episode four. Now yeah. let me tell what, you. What do you think? Well, yeah, that's what I want to say. What- first of all, spoiler warning. Um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna spoil this shit. But um, I think I think what I've thought for a while. Um. I think that they could have turned these first four episodes into one hour. <laughs> yeah. And um, achieve the same thing. Um, I don't know. I, I think I think episode four was really good. Um, but it does it does walk that fine line between doing shocking things just to shock people. Mm. and um doing intense things with purpose right like th- there's a fine line between those things right where some shows are just like well we're going to do these incredible things and the only real purpose is to make viewers go oh, what the fuck yeah right which to me is bad and then there's the opposite end of that where they go we're going to do these crazy things that are going to just flip our story on its head and really do something incredible for what we want to accomplish in our storytelling. Yeah. And until we get the next two episodes, I don't know which this is. Right now, I, li- I like it um, because I feel like we're going to change our understanding of things and it's going to, you know, tie things together and, and, and really open our eyes to what the future of the MCU can be or at least what the future of Loki and, and these characters can be. Um, but at the same time, if that doesn't happen and something else happens, then I, I'll 
to look at it and say, wow, that was fucking stupid. It didn't serve any purpose other than to make people go, holy shit, dude, what the fuck just happened? So, yeah, that's how I feel about it. Um, but right now, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with it. I, I, my wife hates cliffhangers. And as soon as the cliffhanger, like, started, she was like, and that's how it's fucking gonna end, isn't it? <laughs> and, like, yeah. they just held it for, like, a good, like, ten seconds before they cut the credits. Like, it was a long time between, like, the flash of light and the credits. I was just like, like, are they trying to make us think they're cutting to another scene? Because this episode has already been long. <laughs> So, I don't know. Um, I think when you're dealing with the multiverse, none, nothing should surprise you mm. uh, as far as, like, what's possible. Um, and I don't know exactly what's going to happen from here. I think it's possible, like, something that you said was, right, he's in the loop, right? Because we see him mm. in the loop. But is he still in a loop or is he out of the loop? Is he going to... Is the next episode going to start where we started in this season. And if that's the case, yeah. then I'll be irritated. Yeah. I, you know, I, I just don't like this episode. It, it really just continues to reinforce what I already know, which is like, there's no, there's no fucking plan here, dude. Like there really isn't one. Like it's just, they're just blind shooting in the dark. Like it, 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 it feels, I don't know. I can't put my finger and finger on it, dude, but there's just something that's so soulless about this whole season that just puts me off completely. And I, I don't know what it is, but, like, every episode I watch it, like, I just don't want to watch it. Like, I'd rather watch something else. And, like, even the episode, like, last up, like last week's episode where they were all, like, you can go into the 1800s and stuff like that and having a charming little uh, queer time. I just didn't really enjoy it that much. And I don't know. Yeah. I'll put my finger on it. Like, you know, Tom Hiddleston's great. Um, Freaking what's-his-face's Moby's is awesome. Like, you know, there's good acting here. There's good characters. The sets are good. Even uh, Jonathan Majors, like despite yeah. how he is as a person he's a great actor yeah right i i like this episode really because it gives answers and it does things that's why i like the episode right we get yeah. certain answers that we didn't have before like you know it's things that are kind of obvious right like lens ren slayer being this character right who led the like led king's army to victory right and mm-hmm. then got you know, essentially, he had to be at the end of time alone, so he sends her and wipes her mind and whatever. She's gonna lead the TVA. Like that's at least something. Like that's interesting, right? Mm. Um, and like not only that, like everybody who helped him win the time war, like he wiped their memories and put them in the TVA. Mm. Um, and Miss Minutes knew about it. That's why she's all whatever. She thinks she's so special, right? Yeah. Um. I like the the Kang mural. Like there's a mural of all the Kangs, right? There for from yeah. the from the time war. I thought that was really cool. Um but yeah, again with your loop, right? Not only is Loki in a loop, uh Obi and Victor Timely are in a loop because Obi wrote the handbook that with Victor's info and Victor got the info from Obi's handbook. Mm. Right, so there's another. Yeah, loopy. that's another thing too that I was telling you about that I was really didn't like was like all the random shots of like random time quirky time engineering that they do. I just I don't like. I don't like yeah, that I know stuff. you hate that shit. And I love it in Star Trek. Is the thing is like when they're doing all the engineering stuff, but in this, like I just, I don't know. I was like they're doing it to pad pad the pad the script to be honest with you. Yeah, but I, to me, it, like it felt like for one of the first times this season there were actually stakes to. St- to, to things like they were actually like there was actually like the like, because in the other episodes it's like it will be keep saying we're all gonna die it's so imminent and like nothing ever fucking happens but in this yeah. episode at least something fucking happened and like yeah mm, okay so huge spoiler skipping ahead to the very end yeah basically this whole episode is they're trying to get the freaking time reactor or whatever fixed so they stop the time the loom, from exploding yeah. And, yeah and blowing up to the handle GTA. the to handle the yeah. branches so they built this new device and they needed timely to do it and they needed his like permission because he's the you know the one he who remains and like his temporal or signature or whatever that did so uh, that like, also didn't make any sense sense at all yeah so they, they get him they get all that stuff done like okay everything's great now Dick, victor's like uh, victor timely's like okay i'm gonna head out there myself and plug it in because i want to see the temporal realities and then like he gets control alt deleted right 
Right. And it's supposed to be like a, it's supposed to be a big shock. Like the biggest shock. Well, the big shock this episode. Everyone can squeeze to death in that box, but it was so fucking PG. I couldn't even help myself. Like they didn't have. Any oh, I liked noises. it though. They didn't have any crunching noises or anything. Like you know, you, you should hear some bones I snapping heard, and some like. I heard the blood though, like the I blood dripping. I didn't hear anything. Uh, like, I, heard, I, I, heard, I, heard I, I wanted to hear some bones. Like I wanted to make them get really personal with it, but they didn't really do any of that stuff. I feel like walked, I feel like they they, they, they were doing that class. They should have shown the meat cube, bro. They should have shown us the meat cube. They should have done it, and they didn't. Yeah, I feel like what you could imagine happened is always going to be worse than what they could show, especially with all their bad CGI recently. I guess you know, like yeah. I don't know, but I. Uh, I... What the fuck is wrong with Sylvie, bro? What is wrong with her? Yeah, and she... bro, my yeah. guy, Mobius. Oh, just, just to just to finish my thought really quick, like that end sequence where he gets deleted by the temporal radiation was so stupid. Like I thought that was just the dumbest thing. Oh, he walks out and he dies, and everyone's like, "Oh no, we all fucked up," and then it explodes, dude. I thought that shit was straight. Like if I don't know, man. I thought it would have been a better idea, like, maybe if they had, like, like all, like, a couple of them, like, using magic or something like that. I don't know. Like, to, like, say, okay, right now we're going to go out there, we're going to protect the magic, and blah, 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 and then they all get deleted anyway. Something better than, because they they're obviously all dying, so why, you, well, why don't you just raise the stakes in that episode right. to, like, the upteenth degree? So, when, Ugh. so Loki, Loki and Sylvie, they, they, they have Obi turn off whatever, this shit. Right, yeah. so they could use their magic in the TVA, and yeah. then they use it, and then they don't use it anymore. Bro, you couldn't have done anything with the temporal loom using magic. You're telling me you couldn't yeah. have used magic? All right, that that was kind of dumb. The other dumb thing, right? This is later, but I'm I'll go back to to Sylvie being a, a, a see you next Tuesday. But when when Loki's trying to convince her like to help save all these whatever, like she's like. She says something about playing God, and my first thought is, "Don't say, but we are gods." That's the laziest, stupidest line you could say right now. It doesn't make any sense in this context because Loki isn't trying to tell you we should be gods. Loki is trying to tell you that other people have lives that matter. So don't say it. It's low hanging fruit. It doesn't make sense in the scene. Don't say it. Three seconds fucking later, we are gods. Motherfucker, what? What the fuck, Loki, man? That's not that's not even your point. Why'd you say mm. that? It's when when I we we you know we're, we're playing God. We are gods. Yeah, of course you are. Shut the fuck up, man. Jesus. I hated that. Anyway, also hated yeah. that Sylvie. I hated that whole I hated that whole sequence. Like Sylvie killing people is bad and wrong, but I like to kill. But it makes other people feel bad. Oh, I don't like to kill anymore. <laughs> It has uh, long-term consequences, Sylvie. Oh, I didn't think of that. So, bro, she like, lost bro. her shit on Mobius. He just wanted a piece of pie, man. Yeah. Let yeah. the man eat a piece of fucking pie. The, the his entire universe might explode, and you're just sitting there ripping into him. And you, 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 you don't care about your life on the timeline. You, 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 you just want to eat fucking pie. You think you're fucking pie. Shut the fuck up, man. He just wants pie. Yeah. Like you're so judgy and stupid. Anyway, um, I like the episode. I just, you know, certain things. I was just like, why, why do that? Well, these episodes are cool, but I don't know, man. I always think about episode one of Loki. Like the first season was so charming and awesome. And the other thing is, like, what the fuck is going on the TVA? What do these people do anymore? That's what I don't know. Like in the first, like we always have. Well, they're the TVA clearly the not maintaining the loom because <laughs> because <laughs> like, it blew the, up. Where I remember watching, I keep thinking I'm gonna rewatch episode one of Loki just to confirm. But it seemed like the TVA was a lot like background actors were a lot more present and active in the last Loki, and then this one they're almost not there at all. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I don't I, get I don't Renslayer's thing. Why is she murdering everybody? Like, bruh, what is your problem? You want you want the TVA to run. So does everybody else. What the fuck, man? Yeah, like, why are you murdering people like that? Like, what? What? Like, what, what is your like goal? They needed, it's like they needed a villain, and they're just making one up as they go. That's Bro. what it feels like. It's like, they, okay, we need to make her into just turn her, go have her go full serial killer. She needs to start killing people. Let's she like, wants. Go. She wants to run the TVA. You have a group of people trying to save the TVA, and what is she doing? Killing people in the TVA. 
She's not helping. She's not trying to save anybody. She's not trying to prevent the temporal loom from blowing up. She's trying to kidnap Victor Timely so he can't save the TVA. What the fuck, man? It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. What 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 is her goal? And we can work together. We're doing what? Ugh. What? I don't yeah. I don't get the the story elements of this. Like they don't they don't tie together. I, I what is her actual motivation and why does she? And if it is to run the TVA, what, what, why doesn't she help him what save if she's it? She's Jonathan Majors in disguise. <laughs> We don't know yet whether they're gonna make her. They're gonna recast her as Kang. Just watch, bro. They she's won't. Turn they in, won't. She's gonna turn into Kang. They just won't. you fucking watch, dude. If I would, if okay, they listen. Won't. If they recast her as Kang because of this show, you're gonna take me to Texas Red House. All right, that's what's gonna happen. Bro, I'll she's take you here. anyway, okay. even if you're wrong. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I'll. I, I would prefer to take you if you're wrong. wrong. They got those fucking margaritas there, bro. Texas Red House. Be careful. Those things are dangerous. Well, you don't have to tell me to be careful. I just drink sweets either. Mm, those fucking margaritas are fucking fantastic, bro. All right, I, b- I believe you. I do see that people order them a lot. Do you want salt or sugar on the ram? Yeah. I, I don't. I don't get. I don't get either. I just right. like give me that. Give me that extra tequila shooter, please. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, so but if we go to Texas Roadhouse, which one are we gonna go to? Because if you're gonna drink, then you know you can't drive home. So like. Mm. I mean, you can come here, and then I could take you, and then you can come back to my place and, like, nap it off or some shit, but... Yeah, it's six more. It usually takes me about two or three hours to sober up, so... Yeah. Hey, I'm sure we could find something to do in two to three hours. Yeah, go see a movie. Yeah. Anyway, I, mean, I don't know though, if you want to see a movie when you're drunk, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah hell yeah, dude. I'll be fucking tripping balls. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, anyway, though, it's... We've been doing this. I feel like it, dude. So Loki, thinking about Loki, the, thinking about Loki is getting me mad. Like that's just what I come down to. Like it just feels like this disjointed mess of a show with really bad writing. With the CGI is kind of okay, and the only reason it's sort of like doing all right is because it has very strong actors that are like just propping everything up with how entertaining they are to watch on screen and how good great, the great chemistry they have. Like well, Sylvie's done nothing helpful and just bitch and moan and be useless this entire fucking season, and everyone still likes her because she's Sylvie. If like, you know. If the She's a McDonald's girl. if the writers are as lazy as I think they are, mm. my prediction is Groundhog that they're gonna Day. Make, that they're gonna make they're gonna make her the new king. No, my prediction king. is Groundhog Day. Like the the this explosion or whatever is gonna reset Loki to the beginning of the time loop, and he's gonna have to live this all over again until he gets it right. And it's so fucking annoying to do shit like that. It's so lazy to me. Okay, guys, we're going to just have them repeat the same couple days over and over again. And every time the temporal loom explodes at the end and there's no escape and they have to do this different. Bro, I, I, everybody's seen Groundhog Day. We don't need to see it in every fucking TV show that exists. Yeah. Like, it's an interesting concept, but not for this show. Please do something creative. I know. I think there was a trailer released for the last two episodes. I didn't watch it. I don't know what the Dude. purpose of that trailer would be because it's just going to spoil what happens next. And I don't really watch trailers anymore, so there's no yeah. point. Yeah. There was like a teaser for Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes or something. I don't know. There's a full trailer coming out tomorrow. I like the Planet of the Apes movies. I, I'm not going to watch the trailer. I'll probably watch the movie when it comes out, but it's been forever since the last one. Yeah. So, bro, it's been fucking like eight years or some shit. It's been yeah. a long ass time. It's been a long time. So, anyway, um, yeah. Uh, final thoughts on Loki. Did you like the episode, or did you hate the episode, or are you just uninterested because you kind of just don't like the season? This season. I'm disinterested now. Like the more and more I see how disconnected and shitty everything is, the more I, I start to not like it. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> I I very much enjoyed the episode. I liked it. Um, but uh, again, that could easily change if they do some stupid ass lazy shit in the next couple episodes. So, um, but anyway, it's getting it's getting late. I'm sure you're hungry. Yeah, always. I'm gonna eat as well. Well, I, I think I have to go to the store first, which is also annoying. But um, I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you for hanging out, listening, watching. Uh, on YouTube or Twitch, if you're here, um, listening on the podcast, you can uh, you can like this video. You can follow 
the Twitch stream. You can subscribe to the podcast. You can um, like, comment, subscribe, click buttons, rate, rate, review, do all that stuff. Much love, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye. Peace out, bitches.